Well, wasn't that peaceful? <laughs> I am trying out some new things uh, on this stream, and I hope you uh, are liking it. It's uh, it's it's very new, and uh, the software is called Restream, and you can see it right up here. The software that I use, I really like it. And let's see if I've got sound. Uh, the there I am. I've got sound. So yeah, I am uh, excited to be talking to you today about how I produce 100 plus tracks per year. A lot of people ask me this recently on the Discord, and we'll talk about the Discord here in a minute. But uh, just opening up the doors here today on the live, making sure everybody can hear me good, but I, I just tested my sound. It sounds good to me. Kind of keep a little iPad going over here the whole time just to make sure that uh, the stream looks good and the sound sounds good. And uh, yeah, I'm just so happy that everybody joined me today. A little, little bit of a cloudy day here in Florida, which is good for shooting video, actually, because the sun can play havoc with lighting. So this keeps my lighting pretty consistent, and uh, it lets me uh, continue. I will warn you that I do have a, a little doggy who's not feeling too good, so she may come along a little while and, uh, and, and make me... Uh, attend to her, but I will play you a lovely video while I do. Um, I, I, I probably will end up buying this this Restream technology just because uh, it's so helpful to do all sorts of things. I can do overlays, can have a little, little thing around me. I can put pretty little flowers. Isn't that peaceful? Now don't you, don't you feel happy to know? how to make lots of music income. So let's get the chat going. I have not even opened it up, and already there is uh, Luca. Thank you for being here. Arco, good day to you. Morning for me, probably afternoon or evening for you. Hey, Stevie B is in the house already. Thanks, bud. Thanks for joining. Nathan is here. JMO is here. Hey, JMO, what is up? Um, Oh, left ear only. That is right. Uh, I need to do something. Let me just change that audio for you, for your for your listening convenience. I'm going to turn off and and then I'm going to also just turn off. We do not need that. And that should be better audio for you. All oh, the flowers. Stevie loves flowers. He really loves flowers. Um, is that better video? Uh, let me know. I mean, better audio. That should be better now. Um, is that better video? As per my iPad, it sounds better. Uh, let me know. Yeah, uh, as I talked about in the uh, last live that we had where we did a music review, in order to listen in stereo, I had to uh, uh, hook up two microphones at once. I looked like I was at a press conference. Uh, yes, thank you for all being here. I'm sure you're wondering how I produce 100 songs per year, uh, but I don't have to do that today. So I will just leave that microphone off, and I don't have to do that. The audio is okay. The picture is a bit fuzzy. Well, live is what live is. It doesn't look bad on the, uh, the thing that I have going over here. Oh, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Let's take off the Wi-Fi and go straight to uh, straight... In, and that might be a little bit better. JMO says, how many plugins do you have, Eric? I'm tempted by a lot of them. Very expensive. Worth it. Huh. Well, that's a that's a long question. Uh, Arco, do not worry, man. We figured that out. No problem. Um, yeah. Uh, there are a lot of good ones. Um, I am in a, you know, as Steve and I talked about, and you can find Steve and I's video in, uh, in the uh, make music income podcasts where we talk about our gear and we will talk about our we talk about our plugins and what which ones that we really use and uh, Steve let me know if that picture is better and everybody let me know if the audio is is good before I get started here today um, it's gonna be a fun day of, uh, of video stuff because Steve and I will get together here in just a little while after this and uh, and work on our podcast and uh, so we'll have a good time doing that. So, all right. Well, if uh, I can get a thumbs up from everybody that they're liking the video and the audio, I'm going to get started today. Uh, both ears now. Thank you. Good. J1, thank you for being here. Appreciate it. And glad all of you are here. 
Um, you know, this is a question I get a lot from people is how do I produce so much music per year or um, just in general? And it's a little different for me because my job over the past 22 years or more, really, more really, but 22 years of only doing production work, um, you know, uh, I, I just think that uh, it's... It's a, it's a matter of just having a lot of balls up in the air at the same time. That's one little piece of it. The other piece, as I will talk about, um, is, is help that I get. And, uh, and, and the reasons why I have to create them as well. So many of you watching this are probably like, you look at this title and you're like, 100 plus a year, I'd be happy if I could do 10 a year or whatever. And I get that, and, and many of you are not where I am as far as, as being a uh, producer for all of this time. And so um, I have found, though, that there is a secret. There are several secrets, and I'm going to share them today in today's video. I found that in order to do all the things that I want to do creatively, um, supply new music to stock libraries, which is not necessarily, that's something Steve and I are going to talk about today, not necessarily stock, but where it falls in the importance and if it pays and things like that. But supplying new stock, new music to stock music libraries, supplying new music to sync libraries, uh, and producing songs for all the clients that I have uh, that they need to put out. Um, I have to have this kind of output. I have to have 100. To, it's way more than 100, I think. Um, so anyway. Hello and welcome to Make Music Income Live. This is our regular Thursday show that covers a topic that my YouTube community votes on the day or so before. And I haven't looked at the, the, the voting, but last night it was overwhelmingly people wanted to know about this subject over poor music publishing. I've had music publishing in the running for a few, uh, for a month or so. And it never gets chosen, like me for kickball. When I was a kid, I was never chosen to play. So, um, by the way, and this question kind of came up uh, in my Discord. There, Someone said, uh, how many songs do you produce per month? And I said, uh, at least 100. And they're like, 100? And um, while I'm here, let me just do a pitch for the Discord because we are approaching 500 people in our Discord. And if you would like to be part of a um, basically, oh, top of the morning to you, Ronan, out there in Los Angeles. Of course, Steve and Ronan are both over there three hours earlier just with their little cups of coffee going, Eric, tell us some wisdom this morning. So uh, glad you're here joining us, West Coasters. Um but our Discord is is very fun, very filled with information. We constantly are trying to figure out how to make it more um, more helpful to you. Uh, it's it's a it's called Discord, which literally means to talk, to to answer each other and have have conversation, and that's what we do there for sure. Uh, we have. Uh, we have a lot of conversation. And if you haven't been part of our Discord and you're like on Facebook or you're in different places where you want to talk about music, but it's just so annoying to get all the ads that are coming up and things that are coming up and you have to deal with your mother, uh, you know, sending you a note. So, oh, honey, I need this. Go to our Discord. You'll find that it, every video that I have now. It's not down there right this second when I get done with this video. And when you're watching this after today, you'll see the link down in the description below. Um, I don't have the... <laughs> Rona says, the sweet sounds of Eric's voice to start the morning. Well, I'm glad here. This might make you feel a little bit better. This is some lovely flowers for you to look at while you're drinking your coffee. And I'm in the dulcet tones of Eric Copeland. Um, signature Music, welcome. Good afternoon to you. It's not afternoon for me yet, but close. Um, I think that's the beauty about this time. I know that there are people who watch this at night uh, at, at, before they go to bed because that's where they are in the world. I know there are people who watch this over in, uh, in, in the 
east side of Europe who are watching this in the afternoon or late afternoon. So glad to have everybody here. Steve loves the, the flowers. He just makes him happy. I can just see the joy that, uh, that it brings him. So join our Discord and be part of that. Um, but what people chose to hear about today is how I produce a lot of music every month, every year. Um, and that has become actually something that I have really um, kind of gone crazy about over the past five or six years as I saw my compositional output drop as I was producing songs. Now, I was still producing over 100 songs uh, and have been probably for about at least the, the last uh, about the last 17 years or so when I started, especially when I moved to Nashville and I was full time producing albums for people. And back then, everything was an album. We didn't live in a singles culture back then. People wanted to produce 10 songs. They wanted to get those 10 songs on a CD and they wanted to get them sold. So if I had at least 10 clients, and I always had more than that, and they were doing 10 song albums, 100 songs. You know, it's not that difficult. Um, I mean, it's not, it's difficult, but it's not that surprising that I would have that much output. So uh, and when I talk about 100 songs, now that, when I started doing my notes for this, for this show and, and thinking about what I was going to say, I realized that it's way more than 100. It might be more than 200. It might be close to 300. And you might be saying that's just impossible and you are just doing this for a topic for a video. <laughs> and uh, you're not exactly wrong, but um, this, uh, good morning from Arizona, Bradford, glad to see you. Um, this is just my life. This is just how it works. This whole channel is only about my experience. It's not that I'm more experienced than anybody else in the world. It's not that I, I have uh, a, a, a more talent necessarily than anybody in the world. It's just that um, I have learned over the course of decades how to work for lots of people, how to work on lots of songs at the same time. And once you do that, it's like any job, you get really good and fast at it, or you figure out ways to get that done. So let's talk about that. Really, a hundred songs. Well, like I said, it's way more than a hundred. I need to get a hundred a year into libraries just for sync, because um, that's the plan for sync. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And I produced or reproduced way over a hundred songs for stock over the last year. You can just go look at my. We're going to go look at my Pond Five in a little bit, and I'll show you where all those songs came, came from. There's over two hundred in there, and I just started Pond Five a year. Uh, a year plus ago. So there's there's sync that I'm trying to do, there's stock that I'm trying to do, and then there's client work. And I'm not sure how many this was uh, exactly last year, as not as many clients are doing albums. We're doing a lot more singles and not as many 10 song albums, but there are some 10 song albums. So, but think about this. I usually have about 20 clients at a time that I'm helping. Now I am not personally sitting here and creating all their music for them. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to do almost none of that and be their label and be their their guide through it. And so, um, yeah, it, with an average of 20 clients and each of them are doing three to 10 songs a year, you can do the math there. It could, I mean, it's, it's not going to be 200 songs a year, but it's certainly going to be between 60 and 100 at least but wait, probably more than that. Um, so that's that's how I have these three areas where I am. Um, I have sync, I have stock, and I have clients, and all three of those have to have stuff, um, and they're all driven by different ways. That um, when you have somebody driving you to create something, um, it's going to make you create something. So um, yeah, if you count up all that over the past year, it's probably almost three hundred or more produced pieces of music generated by one person, me. Now that's a lot for one person, or is it? So that's the question I put to you today. Um, and you can put this in the chat. I'd love to find out what Steve feels like his yearly production is music wise, songs wise. Uh, any of you who are producing yourselves or making songs, I would love to see in the chat 
what you feel like you are doing per year song wise it can be 10 it can be 50 it can be 100 you don't have to be um, this isn't a contest no one's winning a prize um i might give someone you know a nice background for a minute and their name and some lovely hearts and say congratulations but no not really um so i'm gonna have too much fun with this software um but yeah it's it's a lot um stay golden says and good morning by the way uh, it sounds like a lot but we all have hundreds of unfinished project files we really do and and the secret to my stock last year as i'll talk about is the fact that i just repurposed a lot of stuff I just did a recent conversation, and I'll try to remember to put it into a little link right up here when I uh, am able to edit this live video. But I just did, and you can just go back. It was the last one of the last videos here on this channel that uh, an interview I did with Stephen Malin, and he produced a. You ready for this? He produced a 500 track album for uh, for the gaming music libraries that he works for. And he's selling it for a hundred or $200 a pop per album. And, and this isn't filler folks. This is not, and I asked him, if you watch the video, you'll know, I asked him, do you, is it like different versions of different songs? He says, no, 500 individual distinct music files, two to three minute music files. I said, dude, congratulations. That's a lot of work. And uh, he's reaping the rewards of that because he can sell something like that. It's an outlandish amount of files, 500 files. So he can sell it for some huge price like $100 or $200. And so you need to watch that video because uh, that's a whole new world, as we said, uh, of music income if you're interested in that kind of uh, stuff. Um, Stay Golden says, I heard about that crazy amount of work, but obviously, definitely worth it, obviously, as it got him an audience. Yeah, um, he has built an audience for a long time. He has he has he has been doing YouTube for a while. Uh, Bradford Knight says I typically do a song a day and have for the last twenty five years. It's just a matter of sit down and do it. Make the time. Fifty two cues, right? Are you part of uh, Dave Croft's fifty two cues community? One track a he that's one track a week. You're talking about one tr track a year. So yeah, when you do a song a day and you have twenty five years. A lot of songs, and uh, I, I, I wish I was. I mean, I'm that prolific, but I don't. I just don't record them all that come into my head or that I write or whatever. So, um, you're you're probably a lot more in your my song catalog is somewhere around a thousand, but uh, of my personal songs, songs I've written, but um, I haven't. It's probably grown over the past year just with everything that I've been doing. All right, so let's move into the sync part of this conversation. This is an important part of my future income. I want to be um, putting out at least 100 songs into sync libraries a year so that in 10 years I'm at the 1,000 mark. Actually, I'd like to get there faster. Uh, my goal is actually by the end of the fifth year, this is this is kind of the end of the first year or a little past the end of the first year. I'd like to have over a thousand songs in libraries. I think that's the only way to really have success, like consistent income success. And I'm hoping that sync is the thing that um, that brings me that kind of backside income through upfronts, through PRO checks uh, every quarter. So that's my goal. Um, after about a year and a half of actually getting signed by exclusive libraries and getting about 100 to 125 songs into those libraries uh, that are either in there now or will be in there soon, uh, that's not a bad start. Um, I need to uh, get way, uh, way more in this year to get up to the, um, I mean, I'd love to be at around 250 to 300 songs in libraries. I don't know if I'll get there, but I'd like to do that. So, uh, and luckily I have lots of songs that I'm working on that haven't even been placed and new libraries to approach that I want to approach. So how do I do 100 songs just for sync? Let's just start there. Let's just start with the sync part. So when you look at it as 100 plus songs a year, that seems impossible. That might seem impossible. Bradley does a song a day, so it's not impossible for him. Um, Luca says, in the past four months, I've realized almost 50 tracks. So then I think for sure I could arrive at 100 by the end of the year. Yeah, 
very good. And uh, yeah, realizing them, having them in your head and then actually doing them is two different things, isn't it? So, but this year, for example, um, here, are, here are the albums that I have under construction for sync libraries or have delivered. A classical piano album that was mostly piano sonatas already delivered about 22 tracks. A country album I'm working on for a library, which is going to have between 10 and 12 tracks. That's about 60% done. Another country album that I did not write and did not produce, but did uh, kind of act as a sync agent and got that submitted of 10 songs. And the R&B pop album that is about, only about, it just started. I've got a couple songs done, an artist going in the studio for that. Um, a percussion album that is really turning out well and it has been somewhat driven by taxi briefs. Um, but I've got about six done, six or seven kind of in production. Some of them have been mixed and, and, and sent to taxi for briefs. But some of them are um, absolutely uh, in process. They are, uh, I, I still want to go in and add some things and uh, the, and this is in concert with percussionists from Nashville and drummers from Nashville, kind of getting them involved in this and getting them involved as partners. And we're going to talk about the partner thing here soon. Um, I've got a Christmas album that I need to start uh, that was requested actually yesterday. And uh, I've got it, that kind of semi-started. So it'll be 10 to 12 tracks. An ads record that I've got two, it's about 20% done. And then, a, and then gospel albums, several different gospel kinds of albums, and they're kind of weird, but uh, 25 or 40 songs. So I have already 100, over 100 in, in the works right now or already placed with uh, one of my libraries uh, or several of my libraries. So how do I do all this? How do I get all of those done? And this is just the sync part, okay? This is not the entire, uh, this is not all of my work. This is just the sync side of it. So uh, how do I do it all? Well, I have help. And I'm going to talk about that as we go on here uh, and, and how I get that done. But that's just a, a kind of a glimpse into the sync side of this because there's a lot more to talk about. Uh, Ronan says, I use it daily and send the, the humming file to my DAW. I might have missed something there. Um, the Discord has been great for... Ronan, this is about from Ronan. He's talking about our Discord. The Discord has been great for quick questions and research. Um, Stay golden, as I said. Said it sounds like we all have hundreds of unprinted finished project files. And he also says now that I have more of a process to finishing trap, I'm able to bang a lot more out. Yeah, I, I think I banged a lot more out yet last year, as I went through every unfinished product I could find, and just repurposed it for stock and that's what we're going to talk about next is stock um Bradford says i typically do a song a day um stay golden was talking about the uh interview um talked about luca already uh oh storm rolling in i uh, hope it's nice to us we can get some nasty storms here in florida I use it daily and send the humming file to my dog. I think Ronan uh, was talking about probably his phone, and uh, I do that all the time. I, I, I write songs to my phone as I'm walking around the mall or someplace, little ideas that I come back and visit later and build in stuff. Stay Golden says, um, I feel like producers find it easier to start new tracks, so a big part of it is displaying ourselves to finish tracks. That's very good. Instead of constantly starting new ones. Right. And I agree with this. I, I have a lot of songs that I start, but um, I have a way of finishing them that always doesn't involve just me. And I know a lot of you are Lone Rangers, or as, uh, as Stevie and I related to them a few weeks ago, cave dwellers. We all live in our little caves here, you know, working on our, on our computers. And uh, we're all in this kind of... Uh, this kind of place. Sorry, I don't have a cute overlay for a cave. But um, anyway, uh, all right. So uh, Dane says, uh, most of mine old songs pieces are on cassettes. Uh, yeah. You know what? That's a good, good uh, point because I have boxes full of cassettes and I cannot find a good cassette player. I'm going to have to invest 
it, it, you can either find like a cheapo one that really doesn't work anymore at a thrift store, or you have to spend hundreds of dollars on a really good one. And I'm going to have to spend hundreds of dollars on a really good one. So I can go back through all my cassettes from the, literally from the 80s and 90s uh, and early 2000s before I was mastering on computers um, because there's a lot on there that I could probably mine, uh, not mine, but mine the songs and get them out of there. Bradford says, you're building a great community here. Well, thanks, Bradford, and thank you for being part of it. You're a big, you're a big part of it on all of these lives. I appreciate that. Um, Justin Jones, hi. Here's a little something for you, Justin. We hope you like flowers. This is just for you. Thanks for being here. Little birdies. Little, little, little clouds. Little fluffy clouds. Okay, enough of that. Let's move on to stock music now. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how I produce so much for, for stock and, and why. Uh, and, and that may change this year. Who knows? Although seems to be running along the same. So last year, I produced a lot of stock music. I repurposed stock music that I already had, um, and, and that was a big part of that. Um, and actually, the best way to count how many files I have available to be licensed in stock is Pond5. So let's go ahead and just take a quick look, actually, at my Pond5 page. Um, and you can see this um, at Pond5 as well. But uh, from the moment music, but let's just take a look at the uploads page and let's now switch over there. Okay, so here's my uploads page. And um, yes, I agree. You can see that uh, I'm going to have to just control that. But um, so everything that you're seeing here from here all the way down till the Christmas stuff starts. Um, down here, joy to the world. All of this stuff from right path all the way up is this year. That's about 20, 28 new files. Now, these are not new songs, but as we know on, on Pond5, especially each one of these songs can be different audio files for sale. So that's kind of how I look at stock. Uh, not just a song, but it's, all of its possible ways that it could make me money, different versions and loops and things like that. So that is, uh, that's going on. But as we go down into the rest of my stock stuff from last year and we get into the holidays, this is new, this is new, this was new, this was new, this was all new, but this is not new. Uh, what's in that bag, Santa? Um, Jolly Old St. Nicholas. It's Time for Christmas, which was just signed to Crucial Music, by the way. Um, and a, a few of these, and, and as we'll go through the rest, these are all new. These are all new. Moon Over the Ocean is not new. Continues to be a, a crazy bestseller for me on Motion Right. I don't know why. Calmer Sea is not new. Uh, this is something that I repurposed, the Scott jo Joplin uh, Stop Time Rag. So as we go down closer to the equator is a song that I wrote for a jazz album and ended up really not finishing. And so I had to finished it out. And, uh, this was a song that, and these two are songs from me and a friend bass player friend that we did. And so, uh, this is my piano, uh, con my piano sonata that I wrote for my school. So a lot of this stuff was repurposed and put into stock, um, and as we go through there, I could, I could go through and, and tell you, but I don't want to do that for the rest of this video. So that will tell you a little bit about kind of how uh, I have so many uh, songs in stock is because I repurpose so many, probably, if not, if not half, probably at least 30% of my stock library is repurposed. Now, a lot of my stock library is, when I first started, I was doing lots and lots and lots of per Daniel and stock music licensing and, the, and what we're taught in that on that channel. I was doing lots and lots of different kinds of um, uh, versions, but I'm not doing as many versions. These days, I tend to do a loop version, a real version, uh, the, the major version, and then maybe if there's a vocal, I'll do a track version if there is a melody that's a little over the top, I will take that out and do a bed version, but not a lot of versions. But still, uh, I am on track for 
uh, another 120 new files this year in stock, at least on Palm 5 or on other places that I might put them. Uh, to be honest, uh, Audio Jungle, I put them there, and, but they are all, all the takes are included in there. But um, I'm about to pass 100 files on 100 songs, actual songs on Audio Jungle. Would have passed it a long time ago, but I've had to take many out to get signed to sync libraries. Um, same thing with Motion Array. I'm, I'm at literally at 99 uh, songs on Motion Array, about to pass 100. So that that hopefully will will go up to about 150 this year. So, so um, recent developments could change my output for this year, and that is another video that will be coming up here in a few weeks. So stay tuned for that. But um, what I put I put in my notes the reason for 200 plus in stock in three months. Well, the reason is, you know, how did I do that? And um, I have new ideas and old ideas, just like you saw there. Um, I'll talk more a little bit more about this in a bit. Um, Guillermo is here and says, the problem with finishing songs is feeling that it's never good enough. Having a deadline, even if you set it yourself, forces you to move to the next track and getting better each time. Well, that's absolutely true. If you are part of Taxi or you respond to briefs on Motion Array or you respond to any other kinds of briefs or you go to, there are sites that, have other there are other sites besides taxi that are cheaper there are other sites besides motion array that are looking for songs every month pond five tells you what it's looking for audio jungle i think does the same thing they're all telling you hey this is what is being searched for you can write for this so if you know you have a date for for instance for like a taxi brief that is a, a deadline brief i had one the other night tuesday and i did not make it i did not get to the the deadline because i um am now busy at nights a little bit more again i'll talk about that here in a little in a, in a few videos i'm not ready to really discuss that yet but it's super cool but um i i just was not able to get to the brief even though i'd had a drummer help me um all that to say that brief has resurfaced again today uh for uh for taxi so i'll be able to resubmit that brief finish it up and res resubmit it. So I really didn't lose it. But um, yeah, that's that's having those deadlines is super helpful. And, and to be honest, all the client work that I do would not get done unless a client was sitting there going, where's my song? Where's my song? Is my song ready yet? Is it ready? Is it ready to go? I want to go to, I want to go to, I want my single to drop next month or next week. So a lot of that is client pushed and client pushed is helpful. Just to be honest, I mean, it makes you get stuff done. I used to be a serial non-finisher. I mean, I never finished songs, and now I try to. Um, Ronan says, the Audio Bridge app is free and great for recording quick ideas. It's pretty much a multi-track that I use daily and send the humming files to my doll. Thank you. That's very cool. I I, I take that. Is that on both uh, iOS and Android, uh, Ronan? I, use, I just use the voice notes. Uh, app in um on my iphone and that has i've used that for clients where we're in a place and we're working on a song and we record it and then i take it home and then i uh, try to transcribe it or whatever so audio bridge app cool to know jose uh good to see you uh jose blues says what do you know do you, how do you know what pond five is looking for greetings from mexico well greetings mexico um let's see if i have a little something for mexico here Oh, that's flowers. No, well, I'll give you some some flowers and clouds and fluffy clouds, uh, Jose. <laughs> Welcome from Mexico. Um, maybe you might even have UFOs there, and if you do, there's some UFO stuff for you. But um, the way you find it is they put out a uh, a kind of thing that they're looking for. They talk about it all the time. Uh, you can go into the contributor side and. I can't remember what it's called, but um, I'll try to put it in the notes of this, or you can ask me again if anybody knows that thing about um, about um, Pond Five, what it's called. Uh, we've all seen it. It's they they put it up. They send emails out and say, "Hey, here's what's trending. Here's what's here's you know how to put a song out for Christmas. Make sure you put this code behind it, Christmas something or whatever." So a lot of times you will see that. Um, 
Also, Motion Array has briefs that come and go fast. You, uh, I luckily got some stuff in the Easter brief. I'm not sure necessarily that they made me any money, but I do think that they, uh, they, were, they are quick songs to get into your catalog. And so it's the reward almost for being in uh, Motion Array briefs is that you get a song up in a day. Uh, so if if they if they like what you've sent and it fits their brief, you get a quick song up into the catalog. So that's very cool. Um, but I would definitely look at that there. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I don't have any taco uh, uh, backgrounds right now. Um, <clears throat> Guillermo says I searched for Audio Bridge, but it seems to be iOS exclusive. Maybe there's an Android alternative. Guillermo, I would think that there has to be some kind of notes app like a just a just a, in android i seem to remember that there's some kind of voice notes thing all you need is it for to record audio with your phone it doesn't have to be super fancy in fact uh, Matt, apple came out with something super fancy a few years ago that was supposed to add, like add drums to whatever you were singing or add bass to it i found it just annoying i think it's better for our brains to put out what we want through our mouths we know kind of and, and it'll remind us later Oh, I was humming that song earlier today. I need to need to go in now and, and work on that, but certainly. Okay, cool. Well, let's move on now to client work. I've talked about sync and how I develop 100 plus songs for sync, how I develop, developed 100 plus songs for stock and how that kind of goes. Now let's talk about client work. How do I develop a lot of, a lot of files here? Well, up until this year, client work, um, which includes helping them write the songs, uh, produce the songs, and get it finished, and then market it, um, has been my job. I mean, uh, up until just this week, it's been my only job. Now, every once in a while, I will take a job at a church and lead a music team or something like that. But um, right now, as of as of this year, uh, things are changing a little bit. But I have 20, usually clients at a time. And, and if any of you are, are working 100, that's where you make your money. Um, maybe none of you are doing that, but that's how I've made my money for the past 20 years is working with 20 to plus, 20 plus clients a year. You got to have lots because some can't pay every month. Some, some have to drop off and all that kind of stuff. So you have to keep a steady stream of production clients. And they're doing singles, they're doing EPs, they're doing CDs, uh, and they must be finished for you to make money. So Having that deadline, as we just talked about, is very helpful for getting stuff done. But again, I have help. So this is a good time to get into the conversation of the help that I have available to me and how, especially in sync and with clients, how I'm able to get so much done on those places. Because if you look at sync and you look at my client side, those are both possible 100 songs per year uh, places. And again, the secret is I am not doing it on my own. Um, so let's talk about my team. And this is a very important thing. It's, it's so important that I'm just going to make a little title for it, my team, uh, because this is something that uh, is the key to me producing a lot of sync music, this is the key to me producing a lot of uh, client music. And that key is the amazing players and singers and especially engineers and producers in Nashville that have become my friends and my partners uh, in the past 20 years uh, of working for clients. I literally, and I don't, and as you've heard me say on this channel, I do not use the word literally, anything but literally. I literally have 50 to 100 or more players, programmers, engineers, producers, singers, uh, orchestrators, pro lots of different people who do lots of different things. And these people are regularly touring with people like Garth Brooks, Michael McDonald, um, all that kind of stuff, uh, all those people. They are currently playing on albums for all the big country names and stuff like that in Nashville or have at some point in their career, they are most likely all of them working full time, doing only uh, some kind of music work, especially session work if they can, or work at home doing overdubs and the occasional small tour and the occasional um, 
uh, maybe something else. I don't know. But um, these folks generally live in Nashville. As I said, I moved here to Florida about five or six years ago from Nashville, where I was working full time for about 13 years. And um, they at one time or still do work for me. And so many of my sync productions are partnerships, either with a partner paying for production or um, so they can be in a, in, a, in a library with me. I don't know if any of you are watching our, our current partners, but I have a lot of people who are in my mastermind group and or clients of mine that we are specifically working on music for uh, sync and and they pay me monthly to be their producer and and basically guide through this and then they uh, I, I produce it and mix it and they um, they pay for the players and singers as needed sometimes engineers as well so uh, all of these people that I work with and for um, producers singers all these people um, they all might wear different hats. Some, are, some of the guitar players and keyboard players are also producers. Some of them produce their own content for sync libraries and for different things. Uh, some singers can be arrangers or producers as well. So everybody kind of does a lot of different things. But I work with them all through partnerships. And now sometimes my partnerships are with the artists, or I should say the players, and the producers and the engineers themselves. And we partner on projects and they get a piece of the PRO at the end of the deal. And so we make that, we make that agreement and they become, they, they come on. And this is something that you definitely could do where you are. It doesn't have to be with Nashville players. Although I'm, I'm dreaming up a, a possible little side business. I've thought about it for years about how to provide Nashville players for all of you and all my clients and anyone, and that, <clears throat> this may become a, a little subsection of this channel. So if that has interest to you, <coughs> I can hook you up. If you have uh, need of the very best players in the world, as far as I'm concerned, uh, let's talk. But right now, um, I want to continue talking about my team because uh, my team is the way I get client work done and the way I get all these songs for sync done. So having all these people allows me to work on many songs. When I say many songs, I could have as many as 50 songs under production at one time. Um, some could be scheduled for tracking. We, we've already written them. We've already gone through that process and now we're scheduling for tracking them. That could mean a tracking session in, that happens in Nashville. That could mean sending it to a guitar player or a keyboard player to start something for me. Um, some could be waiting, some could be tracked already and be waiting for vocals or they could be waiting for me to get to them and add some extra stuff and get them ready to send to a vocalist. Some of these songs could be um, waiting to be mixed, right? Or just waiting for me to get to them and finish them. And then sometimes um, they could be doing something else. Maybe there's some other instrument that we're waiting to get done, a steel guitar or a, an electric guitar part, and, and the guy who played in the session is busy and we're waiting for that. So it's a waiting game for all the, the pros that I have with me to kind of you know, be part of that. And uh, so that's, that's how, it's a, jungle, it's a juggling game. You are juggling all of this stuff. Um, I'll be with all of your questions here in a minute. Ronan is very interested about this app. I'll tell you that right now. Um, but uh, yeah, it is, uh, and Lucas says, it'd be a dream. There's too many envy among musicians, I mean, in, in, in Italy. Well, and that's probably the difference about Nashville, even probably different than it is in any other city in the world, I think. Uh, even Los Angeles, where uh, it's a, in New York, where it's probably a little bit more cutthroat. Nashville is such a home. Everybody is is friends with each other. Everybody knows each other's families. And so you get the added bonus of having top studio people with really super nice people who are open and want to share their, their gifts with everybody, as long as they're getting paid. <laughs> but uh, they're super fun to work with. And uh, so, yeah, it. this is definitely an assembly. My whole life uh, of music making is an assembly line 
process. Everything is, okay, if it has no deadline, then it can sit in the assembly line longer. If it has a deadline, then it has to be pumped out, right? Has to be done. And so you send it to an engineer and say, I need this by Friday because I got a brief that's due Saturday. And maybe even give it a couple of days of something. So the whole time, all that is happening. I'm dreaming up new song ideas, new album ideas, or hearing that a certain library wants a certain album or a genre of songs. <clears throat> or I'm pushed by a brief, like I was just yesterday, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, or I'm driving a song or an album because a client needs it done, and they want it done by a certain time, and they're paying me to make sure I get it done at that time. So it's not me just doing a task for every song. Um, it's player starting songs, pass around recording, singer singing songs that I've, I've sent to them, getting all those files back, sending them out to engineers if I have to, and having those engineers mix them, or mixing them myself, which I'm doing less of, and sometimes I even have a library that wants to do the mixing themselves. So then I get all the songs back and I distribute. I'm the distribution center acting on as the uh, kind of uh, executive distributor. Sometimes I'm in the middle of, I, I add my thing in the middle. I'll add some keys or I'll add some beats I think it needs that haven't been added. Um, and then I'll send it to the next guy or send it to the next guy. And if they are my songs, I'll probably develop the initial track and then send it through the whole process. If it's stock, then there's probably not as much process because like you, I probably do most of my stock right here in my laboratory. So I, I'm not uh, completely programming and doing the entire track. Now you're saying, isn't that costly? Isn't there a lot of cost to that? And yes, players can cost anywhere from 100 to 175 per per track for their parts, whether they're tracking it live or they're doing an overdub at home. Engineers can charge anywhere from three to five to a thousand. I, I don't pay that much for, for engineering, but uh, somewhere in the, in the lower area um, for tracking and for mixing. You have to pay them on a tracking day if we're doing a tracking session live. Um, singers charge for singing and doing background vocals. And so um, all of these costs though are, if it's on the client side, it's easy. They're paid by clients. If it's on the, or the clients pay me and I pay those expenses. If it's on the sync side, I usually have partners uh, of some kind who are trying to get that song with, be my partner in that song to a sync library. And so they are paying for those costs. That's part of their commitment to the process. I'm doing basically everything else, including a lot of times writing the songs, but sometimes we co-write the songs and then they are paying for production. So these engineers, these players, these singers, sometimes also agree to be part of royalties. Now you can do this too. Maybe in your town, you have talented studios, and some of you are probably already doing this, where you're partnering with studios, you're partnering with guitar players or drummers or whatever, and saying, hey, I'll give you 10% uh, of the PRO royalty, of the writer's royalties on this, or 15% or 5%, depending on how much they put in. My general thought on sharing percentages is I would give them the percentage of, let's let's call it uh, $1,000 that you would get out of 100%. So that would mean each 10% you're giving away is $100, let's just say, okay? Because uh, if you average out every song you ever get out to a library, not talking about stock really, talking about sync, if you get a thousand dollar upfront from that or ever, or make a thousand dollars in total of all the songs you do that's probably a good average then you could look at 10 percent as giving someone a hundred dollars for playing that part so you can share your writer's royalty with people and that's usually attractive to them because most people aren't especially out of nashville outside of nashville or whatever they're not in part of a pro they don't have stuff coming in they're not part of a team they're not doing this all the time so getting a percentage of someone's PRO that of a, of a song that might get on television or film is very attractive to people. So use that as, as some possible way to do what I'm doing here. All right, uh, Justin says, I actually just cut my vocal demos on my cell phone microphone. It comes out good since I don't have a mic. Well, uh, you know what? I would say uh, you should get a better mic, but I've done that too. <laughs> to be honest with you, especially with scratch vocals, not necessarily main, main vocals. Um, Stay Golden says, how do you find new clients for production work? The ones I got, I found me through content on social media. I didn't seek them out. 
Yeah, that's a good thing if they find you. Another way to find uh, work is through Upwork.com or Fiverr. Um, you can start there and find clients that need stuff produced. Um, that's probably the new way. That didn't exist when I got started. Um, it wasn't necessarily just word of mouth. I built a website early, like 90s early, like 95 or 97. I, I had a website up called ericcopelandmusic.com. And I also specialized in a special genre, which is is also helpful. So if you do a genre, uh, you you should specialize in that if you prefer one genre. I didn't prefer this genre. I just knew it, and I kind of started producing down that path, and that was like contemporary gospel or contemporary Christian. It just happened to be my background and the studio that I met, the producer I first met, and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's how I got started is people were just searching on Alta Vista or whatever browser there was back then before Google, uh, for a producer in, uh, that particular genre, or they were searching for, and then later on when I was in Nashville, they would search for producers in Nashville or Christian, pr Christian music producers in Nashville. And they would find me that way. Cause my site would come up very high in the rankings. I was always very lucky with my websites coming up very high in the, uh, search engines. All right, so uh, Lucas said, it'd be a dream. There's too much envy. Yeah, we talked about that already. Um, that's all I see in the chat. So I'm going to move on here because these videos, first of all, I, I have a little bit of a hard stop today. But also, um, you know, these these are videos that I want to be evergreen. I, I know a lot of times live videos are just in the moment what people are thinking. But uh, when I make each one of these thir uh, Thursday Make Music Income Lives, I want this to be information that's going to help you uh, in the long term, be somewhat evergreen, and I think this information will. So let's talk about new ideas that I have, uh, old ideas, and briefs. And, and we've talked a little bit about these already, but um, I have new ideas for stock all the time. Some of these are things that would not work for sync. And they don't have anything to do with clients. And and they're just mine. They're just, um, I just decide, I want to do a bunch of songs for Easter. So this year I did a bunch of hymns for Easter, like Easter hymns, religious hymns. And those have been part, as you may have seen, on my uh, on my, on my stock libraries. Also, um, a, a lot of it is just uh, the stuff that I want to do. Uh, I did, uh, you might have seen that Mozart thing. I'm doing a bunch of classical stuff right now, classical piano stuff. I sold a whole album of it to uh, to a library, and now I am uh, selling it to st uh, some extra stuff that I've done of that because I like doing it. It's fun to do, so I do that. That's a, a, a reason that stock is made because I want to make it. Um, I have old ideas that uh, I have been sitting around on my computer that I redo and put out to stock. And I think we all have those. We talked about that a little earlier. Um, sometimes I'm pushed by a brief. As a matter of fact, I need to stop uh, this live sometime soon and get back to finishing a brief for someone who sent me a brief. One of my libraries sent me a brief for about a $1,500 ad that needs a certain kind of thing. So I've got to finish that and send that back this morning uh, because it's due end of day and I won't have much time after this to get to do that. So let's recap. How do I do a lot? I have help. That's the that's the real that's the real answer between of doing 100 to 300 songs a year. I have help. I have a machine that I use to crank these songs out with. And I wanted to do this video because a lot of people in the Discord were asking me, "How in the world can you do that many songs? You can't do that many songs." Um, but as other people have already said, yeah, you could if you do a song a day every every day. You could, if you do a song a week, you you can. Um, uh, if you only do a song a week, that's only fifty-two songs a year. But if you if you think about it in a stock capacity, you could probably do lots of different, um, lots of different songs, uh, or, or, or or I should say, audio files based on that one song. So I have help. I have partners. I have people who help pay for my help that I hire. Um, I think in terms of albums, instead of thinking in terms of single songs. And I think this is an important thing for you to think about. Look at doing albums. I think I heard Jesse talk about this just recently, but this is just the way I've always thought. It's the way I thought for al for clients. And this is one reason why I'm moving a little bit more away from client work is because clients aren't looking at albums anymore. They're looking at singles. And singles 
a single production can sometimes take as long and as much work and communication with a client as an album. It's crazy because you're working on one song over the course of three months. In that three months, if you just put 10 songs in a production and it had the budget, you could have created 10 songs. But people are wanting to do single production these days. So I think in terms of albums, especially for sync, not necessarily for stock, but a lot of times, even this holiday season, this Easter season, I thought in terms of, I need to put about a, an album-ish of songs out to stock of Easter stuff. And I, and I kind of have. Um, number four, I work for clients. And so those clients uh, either are stay clients and I have to get the songs done, or they become partners who work with me in sync and for themselves. They, they, they do both. They develop a song for them to put out on Spotify and for their brand, but we're also pitching it to sync. And so that's another thing. Uh, like I said, I recycle old ideas. That's another biggie. And uh, I follow briefs. That's another biggie. We just talked about that. And then I think about future royalties and future albums and not just next month's payout on Pond5. And I think this is one thing that can really tie people's hands and dreams is they get so tied up on how much am I going to make on Pond5 next month? Oh, I haven't had any sales. Oh, Motion Array is not paying me as much. And this is where stock is, uh, is falling down for me. I can't uh, live in that world uh, except a very small percent of time. So I've got to keep stock very small. And, and, and Steve and I will be talking more about this when, we, when you hear our podcast on Monday. We'll actually be talking about it here in just a few minutes. But um, yeah, I think about the future. I think about hundreds of songs per year into sync and five to 10 years down the road, having a thousand or more songs in sync libraries and just having all of my music out there on Spotify, on in libraries, on stock, having it all out. I think in terms of the future of down the road of the yearly plan, what is the yearly plan? What is the month? And then once you have a yearly plan, it's like knowing how much money you make. You get paid yearly, and then you know how much you're going to get paid monthly and how much you're going to get paid weekly or whatever. You can take that down to hourly. But I think bigger picture when I'm thinking about my output. How much am I going to have up on libraries? Um, and so, all right, well, <laughs> and, and so that's pretty much how I make 100 plus, way plus, a year songs per year. And uh, also, I work my butt off too. I never stop. I always am figuring out. I'm up at every day at eight, seven or eight, trying to write down notes for videos like this, but also keeping notes all the time. I talked yesterday and had a long talk with one of my sync library owners. And at the same time, I was emailing another sync library owner about a brief he wanted me to do. And so I was, and when I talked to my BMG um, and now Universal uh, guy that, I, that I have a, I'm working with, we talk in terms of albums. We don't talk in terms of songs. So just remember that. That's you got to think on that album thought for, especially for sync. Um, for clients, maybe not. For uh, for stock, maybe not. Maybe you can do one song at a time and stuff like that. But I think you really have to think on terms. If you want to maximize your output, you got to think on terms of albums rather than singles. So, all right, well, I'm about to end this thing. Let's get any last questions you might have for me here today. We've got about 20 people that have been hanging out. Uh, I'm going to just look at this. Uh, Leandro, thanks for joining us today. Uh, Fiverr is definitely a good place to start, but they do get a 20% cut of all fees, including tips. That's well, good to know. Uh, Ronan says, I got to get back to the holiday stuff. Yeah, and, and that's the conversation I had yesterday with my library, and I was like, he was telling me these albums that he needs. I said, what about Christmas? And he's like, oh, thank you for reminding me. I do need to get that uh, something. And so we talked about what kind of Christmas album he needs. So I'm going to be getting on that uh, after the current albums that I'm working on and getting that done. That's on the list for this year. Uh, Bradford Knight says, making and inviting Ironman and a smooth workflow. Yeah, I certainly think that helps, you know, have, have uh, your – this the way I don't probably have the environment that I need right now. Uh, maybe next studio, next house, next studio. I'll get it the way I want it. Especially, I tried to turn this into a little writing room instead of a production room. I was in another room 
where I had it set up more like a studio, square room, background uh, stuff that absorbs sound, good absorption all around the room, stereo speakers had the you know triangle going on and everything. But lately I've been more in the writing side of things. I gotta move my chair because I feel like I'm sitting on the floor. Um, I, I've, I've I lately moved more towards composing, and so I've got to I've kind of moved more towards a writing setup. Jose, you are completely welcome. Thank you for uh, for being here today. Thanks to all of you for being here today. And I hope this has helped you have a sense of what you can do. And this storm is rolling in hard. So um, I'm about to say a white beam is there. Always great to have you here in the chat. And uh, great to have everybody that is uh, supportive of this channel. Thank you so much uh, for being supportive. And remember, about all the free stuff that we have, I'll put that down below, the, the free Pond5 video, the free PDF, uh, 50 Ways to Make Music Income. And Ronan, you are completely welcome. Thank you for being part of things as usual. Like one of the, one of the OGs of this channel, uh, these lives. Nathan, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate it. Anyone else, if you have any other questions on this, make sure just to put your comments down below and we will talk. And, uh, and I am really excited and thankful for all of you being here and for you continuing to support this channel. Make sure you leave any comments. If you need to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me at makemusicincome at gmail.com. And uh, Lucas says, thank you for always, hey, thank you. And remember, if any of you that are watching this right this second have, um, have any songs that you want reviewed, I'll be doing another New Music Tuesday next Tuesday at 11 a.m. So get those songs to me. Just send me an MP3 and I would love to review and listen to your music. Steve and I have such a good time. Listen to all the music you guys do. It's amazing. We're, we're, we continue to be shocked all the time. We just, if you haven't heard Steve's uh, latest video, make sure I'll try to put it up here or somewhere, but go to Steve's site and listen to what he had yesterday. Just horrific, amazing stuff from uh, the people that are part of his production music academy. So great. So that's next. I got to go talk to Stevie now. So everybody, uh, go watch that next. Uh, I'll probably put that as the next video since I've talked about that all the whole video. Hope this has helped. Thanks so much for joining. I am going to end the stream now. So everybody wave and smile. And this is a teacher used to do this when he would end the streams that I and my masters. He would just say bye, bye everybody, and we'd end the stream. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, Luca, we'll see what you send me next time. Bye, everybody. Wave goodbye. I'm ending the stream. It's actually ending. This is not a joke.